So let's get started with Spark Streaming. We have already seen Flume and Kafka to get data um, in streaming fashion from web server logs. Now we'll be exploring Spark Streaming a, a bit and eventually we'll try to integrate Flume, Kafka and the Spark Streaming to create data pipelines which are reliable and scalable. That being said, we will get started with Spark Context. We'll revisit what is Spark Context, is, how SQL Context can be created using Spark Context, and then we will actually try to create Streaming Context also. And also we'll see the difference between Spark Context and Streaming Context. And it is very important to understand that difference. So here, um, I, I have launched my Sigwin on my Windows PC, and then I'm connecting to my lab okay and uh, if you recollect we have been using spark shell quite a bit extensively to launch uh, the um, uh, the REPL or command line interface with scala and, and develop the programs and we will be doing the same here so i'm Launching Spark Shell with the master as the yarn and the port as one two four five six. And to recollect, when we run this command, it will create it will launch the Scala based REPL. Um, and also on top of uh, um, launching Scala based REPL, it will import Spark based binaries as well as it will create a web service called Spark Context on port number 12456, um, which we have already done. Okay, so that's what is happening here. It is actually creating the web service for you on top of uh, launching uh, your REPL with uh, Spark-based binaries. You can see here it has created something called a SC object, which is nothing but Spark Context object. And SQL context. SQL context takes Spark context as a constructor argument, and which means that SQL context need to have some web service uh, to issue the SQL queries, and one of that web service which can be used is Spark context. Okay, and what is the purpose of Spark context? To run offline batch jobs. So if you have batch jobs uh, uh, um, which read file from uh, um, a file system or database uh, at a low frequent interval such as six hours, eight hours, 24 hours, week, month, etc. We will use Spark Context to read data from that files or database, process it, and then save wherever you, we want. And then we will kill the session or the session will be killed automatically. And that is the purpose of, uh, that's where the Spark Context comes into picture. We can use Spark Context to read. Um, and process and load the data at a less frequent intervals. But when it comes to streaming uh, analytics, where we might have to uh, uh, get some insights every 30 seconds or every minute or every five minutes, or if you want to perform time series analysis, um, instead of running uh, uh, low frequent uh, offline jobs, we can accept data in the streaming fashion using Flume or Kafka and actually process data at a high frequent intervals, which means five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, etc. For that purpose, if we have to start the uh, uh, Spark context and then process the data, then it will take forever. You can see that when I run Spark Shell, it took 15, 20 seconds just to launch uh, Spark context. It, it will take time to allocate the resources, uh, to, cre uh, to create the context, and, uh, and uh, it is not feasible to process data in streaming fashion using Spark context, even if it is possible. Okay, I'm not sure whether it is possible or not, but even if it is possible, we should not use Spark context to process data at a um, uh, high frequent intervals, um, because of the time it will take to establish the context. Hence, we have to maintain the context for a longer period, period of time, which can accept data at a high frequent interval, such as 10 seconds, 30 seconds, et cetera, and process it and, and uh, load to whatever target 
we want and for that we have to create something called streaming context and that's where uh, the term streaming came into picture and if we uh, as part of our spark job if we create the streaming context it will keep on uh, falling into the queues or file systems whatever source we have given every five seconds or whatever interval we define and then apply the logic to process the data and we will see that as we proceed further that being said to actually create the streaming context first thing you need to remember is you cannot have spark context running within the same job whether you are running a spa, um, uh, your uh, uh, application using uh, spark shell or spark submit if you have spark context already first you have to stop that to to create streaming context and it's vice versa you can have only either spark context or streaming context because they have to have uh, uh, resources allocated and the behavior of them is completely different so in a given application either you can use spark context or you can have streaming context i will show you now so to create streaming context you can say import org.apache dot spark dot streaming dot and you can hit tab and you can see all these classes are there so first we have to import this package to create the streaming context and again to create the streaming context which is nothing but a web service it also need to have a configuration object same as the case with spark context spark context is uh, um is created using configuration object all right so if you want to create a streaming context first you have to create a configuration object with whatever name you want and then say new spark okay i have to first import spark conf also so import org dot apache dot spark dot spark conf and then val conf equal to new spark conf and we have to set app name and also we have to set master in this case let me define it as the arm client okay this is how you do it programmatically now the configuration object is created now let us try to create a spark streaming context it takes two arguments so it's streaming context it takes two arguments one the configuration object comma and um, uh, a numeric value which will tell the frequency at which the streaming context has to pull a but a given source whatever source which we, we want to run um, that source will be pulled um, using the value which we are passing now typically we will be passing by using a uh, class called seconds and here i am passing 10 seconds and then hit enter now you can see that it is trying to create spark streaming context but it will fail because there is already spark context running in the same session as we launch spark shell spark shell creates spark context hence it fails you can see here currently running spark context hence it cannot start streaming context so if you want to create the streaming context after a particular spark job is run then you can actually first stop this par context and then create the configuration object and then create the streaming context so this is how you can create the streaming context using spark shell but developing streaming programs using spark shell and then validating is a bit tedious hence i'll be taking the path of uh going through the development life cycle using uh, uh, sbt based project and then validating using sbt console or spark submit on the local pc 
and then we will deploy it on the cluster. So we'll take that um, development lifecycle path, which we have seen earlier, um, to actually create the streaming uh, based application. Uh, I tried with Spark Shell, um, but uh, there were some issues. Uh, uh, Spark, Spark Shell with streaming context is a bit uh, um, buggy, at least here. It is failing for some reason. I could not troubleshoot that. But when I actually develop and deploy, it is working fine. Hence, I'll be demonstrating about how to create the project um, or application uh, with streaming context and how to develop it and how to run it in a series of videos. Okay, so that being said, I hope you understand the difference between Spark context versus streaming context. It is very, very important. Spark context is used to, to read process and load data at a low frequency interval often it will be at least in hours whereas streaming context will be uh, performing the same tasks but at a very high frequent intervals it can go as low as five seconds or even less uh, but it's very rare to go less than 10 seconds so that's the main difference between spark context and streaming context <laughs>